Hello, so here's the long video of the latest update to the UE4 hair shader pack that I'm creating. Um, and you'll see here I've refined how some of the strand stuff works. Um, yeah, I've added, I've added a few extra components that help help control the anisotropy. Um, and because I don't have direct access to the light direction, I'm basically using the camera direction to get some kind of effect. And it seems to be good enough. Um, you've got control of enough settings to get semi-realistic looking hair as well as uh, stylized hair. So you'll see some of the hair looks a bit more cartoony than others. And this one's kind of geared a little bit more realistically, this uh, blonde hair here. Um, you can see you've got control of the, the root, the tip, and the two-tone uh, overall. I've added some, uh, basically adding an anisotropy into the colour and as an emissive map, but you have full control of that. And it's not too overpowering. You get, you get full control of how strong it is, so it, it's not like it's it's going to be glowing in the dark or anything like that. Um, and you can be as subtle as you want with it. So you can see I'm I'm kind of emphasizing some areas probably more so than uh, you would see in real life. Really, just to extenuate what you what you can control because the video will, will lose some quality. So I'm boosting things just for uh, really just for show. Um, but I dare say there's some hairs that are like like this. So there's two anisotropies. There's the top one, which is anisotropic bend. And what that does is just shifts the, the green channel of the normal map, uh, plus adds in a few things so you've got control of uh, like frizz on top of that. And then there's light aniso, I call it. So that's like, uh, it's kind of like using matte cap in ZBrush, for example. So it's using like a fake light to get uh, a sense of extra light. And it seems to work well. I use the camera position to help offset it, and you've got control of where it, where it's positioned and um, the power and things of it. So you can use it as a secondary highlight, as you see me doing here. And you control of the strength, the spread, and how much of the color it inherits from the base color. And it helps. It just helps break things up a bit. Um, some of the hair was looking a bit odd with the just the anisotropic bend was making it look kind of weird and metallic. Uh, it was getting too much of the colour coming through. So I've kind of toned that down inside the shader and um, uh, brought in the, the other effect. And you see me controlling it here. Plus you've got the regular gloss. Uh, shining this level and uh, specularity, so there's, there's those kind of controls. Uh, the shader's two sided and it uses alpha, uh, alpha to coverage like a dithered alpha. And when Unreal does its post process in real time, it, it kind of uh, helps get rid of the noise, which is quite nice. Now, this hair wig that I've created is basically my first attempt at doing hair, so it's not great, um, it looks fine for demo purposes, but it's not great to use. Um, it's missing quite a lot of like flyaway hairs that I've, I just never got around to adding. And the the hair strands that I'd created weren't too, um, they didn't vary enough. So I did too many hair strands the same and then I had some that were like very few. And I was hoping that'd be enough. You can see the single flyaway hair in the front uh, just in front of the group there, um, and even though that's that's the kind of thing it can produce, I never I never added it near near enough as I see in real life because when you're making things like this, you start to study people's hair quite often, and you see so many flyaway hairs that that really sells. But if you're doing stylized hair like this, then it's good to break up the the direction of the, the hair, like most people do hair and it all goes in one uniform direction 
well, in reality, hair doesn't do that. You, you often see people, they'll, especially girls with long hair, you'll see them fixing their hair uh, over, and it'll, you know, it'll go over other bits and it'll overlap, kind of like, it'll be multi-layered. Uh, so it's just a case of layering it up when you're making it. Um, you see I've done a really kind of rusty orange hair there as well. That was my first attempt at using some of the, the changes I'd created in this material. Um, I've added quite a lot of things. There's a couple of things that don't do anything that I can get rid of. Uh, and my intention with this pack is to create more hair, uh, more hair wigs and more hair materials and pack it all together and hopefully get it sold on the marketplace. Um, and I might, I might write, write some other um, blueprint stuff to help you uh, fit, the, fit the wigs to different head types. So that you can maybe like an FFD deformer, uh, fast form deformer, free form deformer, um, get it to fit ahead. So you can see here that there's a kind of secondary blue area, and that was one of the issues I was having. But I can see that that's now down to the color itself. Um, the color gets too strong, then it will come up with that little defect. Um, Unreal's color system is pretty weird. I found like I don't know if it uses linear or gamma, um, because you you choose a color and it will look one way, uh, in the the color picker area. But then when you look at it in game, it looks different. So it's just a case of just eyeballing it, uh, you know, it's kind of unpredictable and and partly because of the shader it does do a little bit of um, mixing itself. It will mix between the color and the color that it's created and and things like that. But that's pretty much it. So, if you like this uh, this hair shader and um, you want to use it, it's it's available on Itch and on Gumroad. Uh, I've got an update to push with uh, this this latest one after I fix a few little things. But if you buy it, you'll get the the free updates anyway. So it's worthwhile getting and trying it out. Plus, you'll get the the hair strand designer for making. Um, Hair strands without having to use like XGen or ZBrush or 3ds Max hair and fur. You you don't have to use any of those. Uh, uh, I spent so much time using those that it was too cumbersome, and, and my little system makes it quite easy to generate the same thing. It generates an RGBA map um, to control the the various tones, the root, the tip, and it also generates a normal map for you. And I usually take it into Photoshop and use some uh, oil paint filter, and that's good to go. So hope you watched. Hope you enjoy watching this video, and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. Bye.